So today we're working on the interior of the S and we have a couple of parts lined up for install that are going to completely change the shifting experience and hopefully bring some really positive aesthetic changes to the interior as well. So I'm going to walk you through the parts. I'm going to kind of give you the rundown on sort of what's needed because it's a little bit of a finicky install and you have to get a little bit creative to get everything to fit right. But once you have it all matched up, it's going to look so, so rad. So I'm juiced for the video today. I didn't find anything else online that does a good job kind of covering the process. So it should be a pretty unique video and I'm super, super juiced to be putting it together today. So let's jump right into it. So before we get ahead of ourselves, I do want to give you kind of a quick driver's POV of what the before looks like. Um, this is the inside of my 2007 Grand Prix White S2000. A couple of the Grand Prix White cars did come specced with red and black combo interiors. I'm personally not super hot on those. Um, I know that a lot of people do find them like really desirable, but I, it's, it's a little bit busy for my taste. But besides that, everything from a driver's perspective is stock. So stock steering wheel, stock airbag, stock shifter, shift boot. So this is just to kind of give you an idea of what we have right now. All right, so what we're working on today is the shifter. So we're going to be changing out the factory shift knob for a two-part kind of accessory kit that we're going to be pulling off a different car. So let me kind of show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so check this out. This is what we're going to be installing today. So this is a brand new shift knob. And this is another part that I'm going to get into in two seconds. So let's kind of unbox this really quick to kind of give you a better idea as to what I'm talking about. So today we're going to be replacing the OEM shift knob on the S2000 with an OEM FD2 Honda Civic Type R shift knob. It's like a very circular design. It's actually literally a sphere. So this is, you know, just pretty much a big ball versus, um, I'd say, kind of probably more ergonomic shape that the OEM shifter has. This is kind of more of like an ovular shape if you're kind of checking this out for the first time. But this guy fits in your hand really well. So, I mean, there's really no complaint here. But the sphere has just kind of a different sort of tactile feel to it. Uh, it's obviously not wrapped in leather or anything. So it's got just a brush finish that kind of goes all the way around. But the cool thing is that the lettering, this little font right here, is painted in red. And like I said, this is a factory part. So in the interior of the FD2 Civic, which was only standard in Japan, this part actually came on those cars. So it's pretty cool that you get to buy this part brand new and it'll fit right on this shifter, right? Even though it's not the same car, but obviously the thread pitch and everything is the same. So there is one small detail with these shift knobs and that small detail is found on the bottom. And if you look at the bottom, you can see that there's actually a little bit of like a shoulder to the knob. And if you look closely at the bottom of the OEM shifter of the S, you'll notice that that shoulder is not present, meaning that if I were to install this guy, bit of material at the bottom, it wouldn't be a completely flush fit. To some people, that's not a really big deal, but to me, it kind of is a big deal, and there's literally a solution for it, so that's what we're gonna be doing with this part. So this right here, and this is an OEM shift collar, and this shift collar rests just underneath the FD2 knob, and you can see that it kind of just rests perfectly, right? Bam. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be replacing the OEM shift knob as well as the OEM locking nut with these two guys. But I want to show you something kind of important. So let me pop these off really quick to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to undo this guy. So I just popped off the factory shift knob and locking nut. And I'm going to do my best to kind of show you why this setup is super, super rad, but actually isn't 100% plug and play. So I'll start by threading on the OEM FD2 knob. Just to kind of show you what full engagement of the knob looks like. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pop this guy off. Now that you know where the shift knob should rest. And we're going to throw on the shift collar. And right away you can kind of see the problem. So it's obviously a direct fit. I mean the thread pitch and everything is exactly the same from the shaft to the collar. But the collar itself is physically too tall. It's so tall actually that it starts kind of rubbing up on this lower part of the shaft where it begins to kind of flare out. Now you run into the problem of having the shift pattern kind of face the correct direction. And because of that you have to back off another couple of threads which pretty much forces the knob up higher than before. So it's it's kind of a two part thing. I mean, you want this guy to be facing the correct orientation and then you want this guy to pretty much be sitting as high as possible so you're not damaging the shaft and you're able to get it as tight as you can. So it's just not 100% ideal. I mean, it does work. It, it technically is functional. Like, are you gonna knock this off tomorrow? Probably not. I think personally, it is a little bit more of one of those OCD type things. But let me show you what we're gonna do to kind of cure the problem. So our next goal for this install is to shorten the total height of this shift collar in order to get it to sit as low as possible on the shaft in order to expose the maximum amount of threads that we can to receive the shift knob. All we're gonna be doing essentially is we're gonna be knocking down a couple of millimeters off of this box 
bottom section of the shift collar because all this really is in here is like empty cavity if you can kind of see that there's literally no threading inside of here so what we're going to do is we're going to shave off a couple of millimeters here do my best to kind of cover this black painted surface because if i get a nick on it and i have to stare at it every single day of my life i will buy another one Okay, so this is my first attempt and you can see that I'm a little bit lopsided with the rotary bit and I actually kind of like this method more versus just going at it with a wheel. I think that the wheel method is a little bit more aggressive. If I were to just use like a cutting disc for example and just chop it, I feel like I might have just kind of chopped it at the wrong angle. Okay, so, so far freehanding seems to be a little bit easier, um, still kind of a slow process, but again, I, th I think I was okay with kind of taking my time on this one. I just got done sanding this thing and it literally looks perfect, man. It looks, uh, it literally looks like it came like this. It, I, I don't know, man. I think I did a pretty good job. Let me show you. So I haven't quite peeled the tape off yet, but you can see how flat it is with the table, right? That's because of that sanding that we just did a second ago. Not like super glamorous or whatever, but really effective. It's a nice, clean way to get a super flat edge on what you're doing. And I'll show you the bottom side, and it literally looks so, so good, man. Like, it didn't look this good when it came brand new. These actually aren't machined that well. I'm going to peel the tape off to kind of give you a look at the finished product. <laughs> this thing came out so good, man. Look at it. It's literally perfect. They should just come like this, you know what I mean? So now we should be good to retest fit. Oh, dude, way lower. This thing sits way, way lower. Cool. Okay, so that's where that goes. Now we can put this guy on right there look at that shoo looks good man super super good let me give you a pov so even though we only shaved off a couple of millimeters i mean this thing definitely definitely feels like it's sitting in a much more appropriate position and the the sanding on this like went so so well literally could not have gone better now if i zoom out just a little bit to the same pov i gave you a little bit earlier when we were doing the befores you can see that this does feel a little bit taller, but in a great, great way. Like this feels so, so good, man. The funny thing is that this knob combo really does kind of need this extra distance right here because since the knob is technically shorter in height versus the OE knob, your hand, I mean, you know, your hand doesn't decrease in size, right? So you need like a, something a little bit more for your pinky to kind of wrap around. So super, super happy how this turned out, man. I'm so, so happy with this thing. Dang, it looks so, so good. So the last thing that we need to do is we're gonna have to do something about this factory shift boot. It's literally probably as old as the car. The thing is, is like with these organic materials, like leather, for example, they don't really just bounce back with a quick wipe down, for example. Like this right here is just dried out. It's stiff. I mean, there's legitimately nothing you can do to save this thing. Like no amount of cleaner or conditioner is going to bring this back to the original finish that it had when it was new. So we're actually going to install a brand new shift boot. So let me go ahead and show you that first. So I have the center console kind of pulled off apart sitting in my lap. The reason you want to pull the whole center console off to get to the shift boot is because you actually have to loosen this little puzzle looking piece from the center console. And mine is loose again because like I said it's disassembled partly. But if you go to try to pull this up without loosening the screws behind here, you will break this piece. And this piece is at least 100 bucks from Honda if it isn't discontinued by now. So what you can do is you can go ahead and flip this from the underside. And here you can see really simply that there are two screws right there. There's a fourth screw down here. And the third screw is sitting underneath the window switch. So in order to get here, you actually have to pull the window switch just to access that screw. But once you have all four screws loosened, you can flip it right around. Pull it off, just like this. So that was already loose. And then you can pull off the shift boot, just like that. So I brought you inside really quick because I wanted to give you a better look at what we're gonna be doing about the shift boot. So now that we know that this is trash, let's set it aside because I wanna show you something else. So this is a genuine leather replacement shift boot for the S2000. 
It's uniquely designed, it's custom made, and it's literally everything that this shift boot should have been. As you can see, the leather grain used between both materials is pretty much identical. This guy looks a little bit more puckered and doesn't quite appear 100% the same, but that's because for one, not all leather is created equal, and two, I mean after 20 years, like it's gonna shrivel up and it's gonna look a little bit more cracked than it should have been, but when this was new, it looked a lot like this. The shade of leather is a perfect match. The stitching used is a very similar design. I mean, it's pretty much the exact same pattern that Honda used from factory, but with a better, higher quality thread. This shift boot is physically taller and longer than this guy is, so this guy's gonna fit a lot better when we go to install it, and you'll see that in just a second. Overall, much better product, much better design, and it's gonna look way cleaner and much more at home in the S. So we're gonna take this guy. So installing the shift boot is pretty easy. All you have to do is attach the little posts and punch them through the little holes that are on the actual boot itself. It can just be a little finicky sometimes because when you punch one hole in, the other side seems to come out. So you have to be a little bit quick about it and kind of do your best to get some of the material tucked in where you can just so that it doesn't flop out. Now this guy is ready to be popped in just like that. You can also double check your work by making sure that all the little posts made it all the way through by checking the holes on the back side. So this looks pretty good to me. Okay, check it out. That is the finished product brand new shift boot, so let's go ahead and install this thing. So while I'm in here, I thought it'd be kind of fun to also do some really quick back-to-back -back testing of the old OEM shift knob versus the new OEM shift knob. So I busted out the scale here for a quick second just to kind of take some weight measurements. So here goes the factory knob, and I'm gonna do the weight in grams just so that it's kind of an even playing field in case there are some international viewers that wanna see this. So we have 249 grams, and we'll do it in pounds. And then we have a new OEM shift knob in grams. And then again in ounces. And lastly, I'm going to get a height comparison for you. So I've kind of lined up the knobs sort of as they would be installed. And this angle probably does the most justice to kind of showing you the real overall height difference. And as you can see, it's not that much. I mean, maybe a couple millimeters taller on the FD2 knob. But the fact that the sphere is kind of located at this like upper portion of the shaft makes it seem taller, right? Because this little neck right here on the knob makes it look like it's almost extended, but that's definitely not the case. As you can see, they're actually pretty even as far as total height. Okay, so now that this is all in one piece, we can go ahead and reinstall it back in the car. So here's our new shift boot. We can pull this guy all the way down to the bottom. It's not all shiny and gross like the old one. So now we're gonna take our new and improved shift knob collar and we're gonna set it all the way down to the lowest setting. We're gonna take our new shift knob and we're gonna put it in just like that. <clears throat> so now we take the shift boot and we raise it like so, and we have a perfect fit. Dude, so sick, man. Ah, it feels so good in my hand. Oh, oh, this thing is so sick. It fits perfectly in my hand, man. Oh, oh, woo. Oh, this thing feels so sick in my palm, man. So here is the final result. We have our New and improved shifting experience in the S2000. Honda Civic Type R FD2 shift knob. We have the FD2 collar at the bottom and a brand new shift boot. Check that out, man. Ooh, custom made, baby. Shoo! Oh, this thing feels awesome, dude. I love this thing, man. Oh, it's weird. It kind of encourages you to, to grab the shifter kind of with these lower three fingers versus wanting to do this. Like, it's kind of easier to just do this, right? Just because of the shape of the collar and the knob put together. Oh man, I love it, dude. I literally, I love it. Maybe we can put this down a little bit more. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what I want yet, but this looks really good. Look at that, it does, it, it looks, it literally looks factory. This looks 100% OEM and you would never guess that this was from a different car or that it had to be modified or that this is custom made or that this doesn't belong in this car at all, man. This thing looks so good, dude, I love it. Oh. Okay, well that's pretty much the full process. I really hope that you learned something. I hope that this setup inspires you to pick up something similar or make adjustments to maybe what you're currently sporting right now in your S or if you don't own an S, maybe this will 
you know kind of push you over the edge and say dude I kind of want to get one now so um, anyway cool yes yeah, super quick video thank you for kind of tuning into this I had a lot of fun man putting this together this is actually a mod that I've been kind of piecing together in my head for a really 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 long time and I'm so so happy with how this turned out man it's just a shift knob but it's not <laughs> it's been it's, it's cool man I'm so happy with how this turned out so I think that that's it for this video so thank you for tuning in and I'm gonna catch you in the next one